Hey guys, so today we are talking about thoracic extension in your back squat, or more specifically your low bar back squat, and how uh, often it is that thoracic extension gets mistaken for other things, or it gets mis, uh, miscued or misunderstood essentially. So first off we need to talk about what thoracic extension is. Extension is basically a movement that occurs in the sagittal plane. Uh, it can happen at a whole variety of joints, but obviously we're talking about the spine in this situation, more specifically the thoracics. So the, the upper spine, uh, not the neck, but uh, the thoracics of the thorax. And thoracic extension is basically this action here. That's basically th thoracic extension. And it's really important when we're low bar squatting that we hold thoracic extension. We wanna be really, really extended through our upper back. Now it's also really important that we don't extend our lower back. So the challenge then becomes trying to extend our upper back without extending our lower back. Now lumbar extension is basically this. Right? And it gets really difficult because what we want to try and do essentially is isolate extension in only a small part of the spine. That is, keep the low back and the, the lumbar spine neutral while extending the upper back. Now, the most common way to cue people into this is by cueing chest up. Right, you've heard that a thousand times. Keep your chest up when we're squatting. The issue then becomes that people misinterpret what chest up means or uh, what they're trying to achieve when a coach yells chest up or a coach himself doesn't even know what they're trying to achieve when they yell the term chest up. So what we've got here is we've got a diagram of two different squatters. Uh, basically that's the ankle, that's the knee, that's the hip, that's the shoulder, that's the back, that's the femur. And this squatter over here is really upright, right? You can see the torso is really upright. And I'm sure you've seen stick diagrams like this before. And when you watch this person squat, you're like, wow, this guy has a really nice looking squat. They stay really, really upright. Uh, they got a really nice looking squat. Whereas this person over here uh, is really leant forward, right? You can see that that's their hip and that's their shoulder. They're really pitched forward. And again, on the surface you go, man, that's a really ugly looking squat. They're good morning their squats. But the exact position that you adopt in your squat is largely dependent on your anthropometrics and on your strengths and weaknesses, whole range of other things. And the degree with which you lean forward isn't really related to how good your squat is, right? It isn't necessarily your objective to be as upright as you can because for a lot of people, leaning forward is actually really, really important of the squat. However, regardless of your actual squatting style and regardless of your anthropometrics, thoracic extension is really important. Like I said, you've probably seen this diagram before, but what this diagram does really badly is it doesn't show the fact that your back is not one rigid unit. And in your back here, you actually have lots of little uh, segments, right? You have your vertebrae, and there are joints within, within those, uh, uh, within your back. So the motion that we're trying to achieve here in your spine is actually extension. So it's basically at these joints here, if you can imagine we had our joints here, rather than keeping a straight spine, well obviously your spine's not perfectly straight, but for the most part, instead of keeping a perfectly neutral spine, what we want to do is almost curl. It's very subtle in this diagram, but we almost want to curl our upper back so that we're extended through our upper back. The same thing occurs here. Rather than being flat lined like this with your chest facing down, what we want to be able to do is hold a neutral low back, neutral mid back, and then our thoracics curl up. So what happens is when you're watching this squatter from the front, you know, with this good thoracic extension, they look like their chest is really nice and high, but they're able to hold neutral through the lower back. Now, like I said, this can be really, really challenging. A lot of guys, when they, or girls as well, when they try and extend their upper back, they end up extending their lower back. So they end up initiating their squats and the, the initial part of their squats looks like this. Uh, looks like this. Right, where their whole back is curved. That's the uh, spine there, that's the hip, and that's the knee. So their whole back ends up arching rather than just their chest. So this is really, really uh, difficult to achieve and it's something that you need to be able to practice. It takes quite a bit of motor control. It takes a little bit of skill acquisition. Um, and it takes a little bit of proprioception, a little bit of self-awareness. So like I showed before and demoed again, and I'll demo again, is that what we want to achieve is this. And if you can see my top, this is what we're trying to achieve. And practicing this movement in isolation prior to getting under the bar is really, really useful. What we're not trying to do is this. A lot of people will end up cheating and end up sticking out their bum, even just a little bit, in a bid to create the illusion of thoracic extension. So it's really important to understand that chest up does not mean upright torso. 
This is not necessarily the goal. We're not necessarily trying to be upright because this person over here manages to keep their chest up really, really well. Whereas you can imagine if we took this same guy who just naturally has a really upright torso because they're wearing really hard heels and they've got short femurs. You can imagine this person squatted like this, right, and that was their shoulders there. They're actually doing a really bad job. They're actually letting their chest drop. That's basically increasing the momentum between the hips and the shoulders, hips and the bar. And you're actually making the lift harder by letting your chest drop. Although on the surface, they look very, really upright and they still look like they're doing a good job of the squat. Whereas this guy over here manages to keep their chest up really well. They're holding thoracic extension, but it looks bad on the surface. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go out uh, onto the gym floor. We're going to have a look at what some of these different squats look like. And hopefully I can give you a, bit of, a better visual than what's here on the board as to what I'm talking about. You're about to see behind the scenes. All right, so we're back in the gym. Uh, I've got a bar over here obviously set to uh, squat and show you some demonstrations. So you're probably wondering why is it so important to keep your chest up? Obviously we know it is, but really what's the actual reason why that's such a big deal? The first and most probably most important reason that I really enforce guys to maintain or hold or get into thoracic extension is that if you don't, you're at a really high risk of ha having the bar roll up your back as, um, as you come out of the hole. So basically what happens is someone's holding their extension like this, right? they've got really big extension through their upper back, and then they hit the hole hard and they go, and they flatten out like that. And you can see now my upper back's flattened out rather than being here. So what's gonna happen is a bar actually ends up rolling up your back. So what that's gonna look like is this. All right, and you can see that the bar is um, nice and low on my back where I want it to be. And we squat down like this. And you can see I'm going to drop my chest. And the bar ends up rolling up my back. Obviously, it's a little bit difficult with no weight. But again, what it looks like is this. And the bar rolls up. So what you end up doing is you end up increasing the lever or the lever between your hip and the bar. Because the bar ends up rolling up your back and makes it more difficult. That's akin to a high bar style squat. You end up shifting the bar from a low bar into a high bar mid squat. So that's not ideal. So a good way to encourage uh, yourself to keep the bar down your back and to promote that thoracic extension is to tuck your elbows down during the squat, especially while you're going through the descent. Uh, and that's for a really simple reason. So you can imagine that if I was holding the bar like this, right, and I've got my elbows here and I'm doing my squat, and if on the way up I ended up flaring my elbows up, look what happened to the bar. You can see that the bar rolls forward. So once again, if your elbows go up, the bar rolls up. So if you throw your elbows up, the bar ends up rolling up your back, making it even more difficult to maintain that extension. So a really good way to prevent that is by tucking the elbows down, having the elbows down and forward, and you're almost trying to like roll the bar down your back. It shouldn't roll down your back, but it should almost feel like that's what you're trying to achieve. You're keeping your elbows down and rolling that bar down and holding it down on your back rather than letting it roll up your back and being lazy. Okay, so a good way to help you feel out that thoracic extension like I showed you upstairs, was simply to uh, feel out that position standing upright. So just even just standing here and kind of trying to move your thoracic. It's really useful if you have a coach or a friend or someone to watch over you and ensure that you're not cheating and using your lumbar. So you want to have someone to be kind of like watching over you to make sure that you're not arching your lower back here. A lot of people, however, struggle because they don't actually have the mobility. They don't have the physical capability of getting into that extended position because they're jammed up through their upper back. So there's a whole range of mobility drills you can do, and I'm just going to show you two really, really simple ones that you can do. The first one is going to be on a foam roller. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the roller and we're going to lay on it this way so that the uh, foam roller is sitting just under our thoracics. And you can take um, whatever kind of grip you'd like. I prefer to teach guys to just go with the cross over here. And from here, you just want to relax and let your upper back fold over the foam roll as far as it'll allow. And you can see it's not great right now. Hold this position for 15 to 30 seconds, come up. And you can roll up your back. Do the same thing, hold for 15, 20 seconds. You can move around, roll up your back. Hold for 15, 20 seconds, roll up your back. Hold for 15, 20 seconds. So you might want to do about three or four kind of reps as you move up into different positions and hold each position for about 15 to 20 seconds or 15 to 30 seconds. And that's going to really enable you to kind of get that movement happening in your upper back. Um, once you feel like that's 
uh, not getting you the carryover that you'd like, you can kind of upgrade yourself onto a bench, which is what I prefer to do. So I lay across a bench and I throw my arms over my head and I just let my whole upper back relax over that uh, bench. So it looks like this. So you can come over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay across the bench, our upper back's on the edge of the bench, and I'm just gonna relax over the bench, reaching up. And holding this position for 30 to 60 seconds, allowing my upper back to crack into place. Once you've done a few of these drills, you'll feel like your upper back's a lot looser, it's not as restricted, and you might find it a little bit easier to actually extend from here. Once you're able to do that in isolation, so on a bench or just on your own, the challenge then becomes doing it with weight on your back. So I know a bit of a longer video today, a little bit uh, of stuff to kind of consider, but the take home message is having your chest up is not the same as being upright in your squat, those are different things. The second part is that holding and maintaining thoracic extension is really, really important. And the third thing is um, ensure that you're able to do so in isolation without compensating through your lumbar spine and then try and apply it to your actual low bar style squat or your competition style squat. I hope that's helpful. If you've got any questions, just leave those in the comment section below. It's a really warm day here in Melbourne, so I'm sweating quite a bit. Um, if you've got any suggestions of future videos that you'd like to see, leave them in the section below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube, cha YouTube channel, and I'll be back next week with another cool video about lifting. Thank you. These days, I don't know how to talk to you. I don't know how to be there. You need me. It feels like the only thing. Uh, now this is a really important uh, part of your lift that really enables you to. Oh fuck! Let me start again.